Hey guys, I'm Hardway, and this is part one of my must-know tricks for Hang'em High. I decided to break this map into two parts, because there's a ton of tricks to know about Hang'em High, and the knowledge breaks up nicely into two parts, random spawns and nade tricks. I learned everything I'm going to discuss today from Halospawns.com. Ben Mintograde Zeiss has built the Halo 1 community an amazing resource for learning how to give good spawns on every map. I strongly encourage you to check out halospawns.com, read about how the spawn system works on the front page, and then use the Explore the Maps feature. Mintograde saves you hundreds of hours of trial and error by letting you visualize knowledge that is invisible in-game, like spawn points and random zones. If you find it as useful as I did, please consider compensating Ben for his hard work with the donate button at the bottom of the page. He's done our community a massive favor. Part 1 of my must-know tricks for Hang'em High will be all about giving random spawns. This is because knowing how to properly spawn your teammate on Hang'em High will have a much greater impact on the game than knowing how to nade items to yourself. Success on Hang'em High hinges on being able to stay spread out, covering as many angles as possible between you and your teammate. Then you can use your combined angles and finishing power to get as many camos as possible and dominate with camo you need to be able to give your partner random spawns to maintain the spacing you'll need to win. Getting bottled up in the same area is a recipe for disaster on Hang'em High, so here are the best ways to avoid that. Number one, the four corners random. Every corner of the map, blue base, red base, camo, and red graves are all a random spawn and will all see a lot of use. Red Graves is a crucial one to use because it is undoubtedly the weakest part of the map and you can't afford to spawn your partner there with you. Camo Corner is another great one to use if you just spawn there or if you just got camo and your partner died. The blue base random can be given all along this wall up to the front of this pillar. You don't have to stay in the corner, which is huge when you need to help contest camo. The red corner random is a bit tricky. It won't give a random 100% of the time. According to halospawns.com, you can get your percentage up to about 70% if you step out along the left wall about one body width from the corner and be in the air the moment your partner spawns. Staying all the way in the corner will only yield a random about 40% of the time. If you have bad luck, your partner will get the spawn to your right towards Red Nose. All the randoms at Red Base are crucial to know because having both players stuck at Red almost guarantees that you're not getting the next camo. So be sure to always try to random out of Red. If you're not playing split screen, have your partner count down his respawn time for you so you can get your timing right on the jump. This underrated communication technique will save your team a lot of deaths when playing online and is useful when giving any dangerous or time-sensitive spawn. Number two, the middle random. The entire middle of Hang'em High is a random spawn. It stretches from blue graves, through the trench in the middle, across open field into red graves, back through the trench in front of red nose, all the way back to blue graves. Any spot in this area will give your teammate a random. You will probably use the middle random every single game, because there are so many spots to do it from. Randoming from bottom hangman is great because you can often keep yourself alive for a while there. Blue Graves is great during or immediately after a fight for camo. The trench is great for when you spawn at bottom open, red pistol, or sweet spot. When giving a trench spawn, note that you need to be pretty far inwards of the assault rifle bridges to get the random. Some good landmarks are the skinny pillar when giving it from red side and almost to the bottom of open ramp from blue side. Any further out on either side will give either the red magnum spawn or bottom windows. Red graves and open field is a necessary evil if you spawn at red shotgun. Oftentimes you'll save your team a lot of deaths if you just run out from red shotgun into open field to give the random, knowing full well that you'll die just to avoid spawning your partner there with you. Make sure you have enough time to get past these pillars and into open field before your partner spawns, or it won't be worth it. Number three, the camo ramp random. 
This spot at the foot of the camo ramp gets a ton of use because this area is so high traffic. It's in a relatively convenient spot because it's so close to camo, but beware when using it. It is one of the more well-known randoms, and it's frequently checked and nated by knowledgeable players. Even if you have camo, randoming from this spot is dangerous because it is exposed to blue base, and players might pre-fire this spot hoping to light you up if you go for it. Take advantage of its convenience at your own risk. If you choose to use this random, you can actually still reach it from behind this pillar, so long as you are on the left edge of it. You're still vulnerable to grenades, but this little trick can spare your camo, or even save your life from a shooter at top blue. Number 4. The Top Office Random This is one of the best spots on the map. Think of Top Office as the P2 of Hangar High. It oversees the entire map, and you can get red reticle shots pretty much anywhere. If your partner dies, you can just back up and give this extremely safe random while still maintaining map control. The only thing you'll need to be wary of is any dead opponents spawning to your left at back blue or blue face, or to your right at blue magnum. Number 5. The Red Spiral Random This is one of the most important and commonly used randoms on the map. It's an excellent option if you've been in red for a little while before your partner dies. It's a bit more dangerous than the red corner random, but you won't always have time to run back to the corner to give it. And it's 100%. Also, this random allows you to contest the map while giving it, which is a nice plus. It does require you to be exposed when you give it though. You cannot give it from behind the pillar. It won't work. So if the enemy knows you're there and you're trying to give this random, make sure your partner counts down his respawn for you so you can minimize the amount of time you're exposed. Number 6, the Red Nose Random. This spot, a little closer to the nose, is useful because it's right next to a spawn point. If your team goes two down and you spawn first, here, take one step to your right and stand in the gap between these graves to random your partner out of red. I see people screw this one up all the time by either standing directly on the spawn point or standing directly behind the grave. The area for this random is very small, so it's crucial that you stand in the gap between these two graves. Once in the gap, shade to the left a little bit for more consistent results, otherwise your partner will spawn to your right against the nose. Number 7. The Red Flag Random It's extremely important to avoid getting bottled up at red, so knowing as many ways to random out of there as possible will only help you out. This random is just above the spiral random, and is best used when both of your opponents are at camo and you are just about to make a run for top power up when your partner died. It's also handy if you have camo rockets and are flushing out red base when your partner dies. Just make sure you're on the half of the tower that overlooks back red. If you want to for some reason, you can also random from on top of both of these pillars. As a safer alternative to red spiral, you can pull from this same random zone if you have the time to set it up. Jump on either of these pillars and jump to the right of these lights as your partner is spawning. Try to occupy this airspace in the moment your partner spawns and you can give a very safe random provided you have the time to set it up. Number 8. The Blue Wall Random This random is often overlooked because it's in a bit of an obscure spot, but you'd be surprised how often you can get use out of it. If you have camo, this is a much safer alternative to the other two randoms near camo, should you find yourself over here. No one nades or pre-fires this spot. It's also handy if you're committed to assaulting camo and your partner dies at an inconvenient time. The landmark you should use to align yourself on the wall is the pillar on red spiral. You want to shade a bit to the left of the red base insignia or directly in line with this sunny tombstone. Any further to the right will usually spawn your partner at Blue Shotgun. Number 9, the Blue Face Random. This is a handy random you can give if you just spawned here or if your partner dies while you're sieging top blue. It's best used when your opponents are either behind your tower or under you at Blue Shotgun. It's a highly situational random because it's so exposed, 
but it's good to know it's there if you need it. Number 10, the catwalk random. Lastly, we have the catwalk random. It kind of falls in line with the middle random, but being up here means you're in a vastly different scenario than being down there. The only reason you should ever be up here is if you have camo, or both of your opponents are at camo. That's the only spot on the map that has a hard time melting someone on the catwalk. Either way, if you find yourself up here when your partner dies, rest easy that he'll get a random and carry on towards that top power up. If you're coming from blue magnum, just make sure you're past the third tile on the catwalk, as that's where the random zone starts. Now I know I just spent all that time talking about how great random spawns are, but it's also important to know that a random spawn isn't always the best choice. Sometimes you'll need your partner to spawn next to you, or the odds of gambling on a random are simply worse than taking the sure thing that's right next to you. Here are some times when you may not want to random. If you are down at camo that's about to come up, and you may not be able to get it on your own, you may not want to random. If you have camo, and the closest random is well out of your way, especially on top power-up minutes, you may not want to random. If you need help sieging top blue or office when your partner dies, you may not want to random. If you are at top blue or office and the other team has camo, you may not want to random. This will help you watch both ramps for the camo guy and then double team him when he lights up. And lastly, towards the end of a really close game, in a situation where randoming would mean certain death, you may not want to give up that free kill giving that random, and instead just fight from where you're at and make them earn those last few kills. Before I wrap this up, I want to emphasize that you should be thinking about these things from the opposite perspective as well. Look for your opponents to be trying to use these same tricks and watch how suddenly gameplay on this map feels a lot more structured and predictable when you know what you should be looking for. If you think your opponent is giving a random, but you can't kill him in time, it's important that you immediately shift focus to finding his spawner. Start with your worst case scenario spawns, like behind you at top blue, or behind you at camo corner, for example, and then narrow it down from there. The sooner you can locate his spawner, the more likely you are to retain control. And if he doesn't give a random, then he's just going to be bottled up and your team will be able to surround them and control will be easy to retain anyways. That'll do it for part one of my must-know tricks for Hang'em High. Hopefully this video helps you and your partner maintain that spacing that is so vital on this map. Knowing where, when, and how to give a random spawn will forever change the way you play Hang'em High for the better. I can guarantee that you will win more games and have closer matches against better players once your team starts giving random spawns. For more info on this topic, be sure to check out halospawns.com, as that was my primary source of information while making this video. In part 2, I'll be doing the top 10 must-know grenade tricks for Hang'em High. Thanks for watching.